You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Four Gates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. I think it's 20 games in a row, three years they haven't lost at home. Tony, I was on the field for the last uh, couple of overtimes, 13 to 12 Notre Dame. I'll tie Cavanaugh's first goal of the day. Yep, first goal. All right. What was going on with the offense? I couldn't really see it too much when you're down this low. It looked like we never got a shot off in the, like the last four or five possessions that was of any worth. Yeah, and in overtime, the, the first two overtimes ended our possessions. We didn't get shots off. It looked like we were trying to run some set plays. They just never never materialized. And then in turnovers, in the third overtime again, it's like the offense kind of ran out of ideas. And a uh, bad shot leads to a, a save for Notre Dame. They get the ball, call timeout, and end it. Yeah. Question for you. Now, my comment to you was, was I remember the six overtime game against Virginia and Cottle kicked himself for calling timeout so every time they got the ball in overtime. Would we have been better off in transition and just go for it? Now, a couple of times he had to because we were in the process of losing the ball. But a couple of times, you know, we'll ask him that post game, but uh, what do you think? Yeah, you know, it looked like this is one of those times where, where, you know, it, when you have more senior players, more experienced players, you can just run your offense. It looked like what was happening a lot was just trying to run a bunch of set plays, and once the first option didn't materialize, everything fell apart. So I agree, there may be, a, you know, maybe some chances in transition, but Notre Dame did a good job all game of limiting all transition. They really bogged Weirman up. They went after him with the face off back. It really harassed our uh, uncles on, on face-offs. It just made it so we could get any flow. Except they still won 20 out of 31 tra- uh, face-offs. Right. It wasn't like it was a bad face-off thing. But, uh, no, we didn't get any transition. There was no shots whatsoever. But uh, Luke, as always, was great. But, but listen, we got to take a look at one thing. And this is good news. I'm just following over this. The day we saw the growth of Eric Spanos, correct? Look, I think seeing one go in, he was mired in a really bad shooting. You know, he was like one for 15 or one for 20. Sees his first one go in off of Enfinan, who, who really had the Terps guessing all game. And then he sees his first go, then he gets two more. Um, the other thing I'm kind of heartened by, you know, three overtime game, 13 to 12, three overtime game against the number two team in the country that everyone thinks is going to be playing on Memorial Day. And our team, kind of young, developing, gives them everything they can handle. It makes me feel a little better about what's coming up later. Yeah, for sure. I, it's disappointing because we had so many chances to win. Be real. The Terps defense time. Just didn't even get a shot off there. I mean, Ripple made one save on a bounce shot right. that was incredible. Right. But they barely got a shot off. 12 to 10 with about five minutes left. I don't have it exact. Uh, I think that's where the game might have been lost. You know, a couple of dead possessions. But uh, I don't think you can fault the defense for this game. And no. I'm not sure you can fault the offense. Sometimes you got to give praise to the other team. It looked like we were really struggling. To get something going in overtime, but that's because of who we were playing. I think so. And um, again, young team for, for the Terps battling a senior heavy team, transfer heavy team. And, you know, look, you hold Pat Kavanaugh to one goal and, and one assist. And Chris Kavanaugh gets two goals. You basically take their two best players out of the team. Uh, there were some saves. You think that the group will later. Um, but there were a lot of saves he made. What did he wind up with? How many? Uh, 12 saves. 12 saves and 13 goals. Is that that bad? I mean, huh? really, I mean, it's not that bad. Huh? And you're going up against, without McNanny around, the best goalie in the country, supposedly. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, look, he got short memories. Next week, they got to go to Albany. And you know, after we beat him 26 to 8 last year, I think they'll be waiting for it. They will be. And if I can make a prediction about, about Notre Dame, they got to play Ohio State last week, who just lost uh, to Cornell. I'd be surprised if Notre Dame drops that one after this three overtime, hard fought road win uh, for them. I'll be surprised. All right, we got to talk a minute about Zach Whittier. All right. Uh, to me, the best offense we ran was when Whittier and Spanos were on the field in overtime. Yeah. Our little game, full second half. 
Tell me about Whittier. Why, why hasn't he found the field? Uh, you know, Whittier comes out of high school, comes out of Georgetown Prep in the D.C. area, high school All-American, attackman. Um, they run him out of the box. Marco Signorelli plays the first half on that second line. They bring Whittier in in the second half, and he was just he just had a little more burst to him and made plays happen. All right, you're listening to the Big Golf Post Game Show. It's Bruce Poser, Tony Wheeler. Wayne is on vacation this week. Uh, he'll be back next week. Uh, we'll take a break for a second. We'll come right back. I think the first thing that has to be proved by the lawyer on behalf of any client who's injured their neck or back is that the client was hurt. And they were hurt in this accident. And even though they had pre-existing problems, the damage to this individual client is much worse now after the crash than it was before. We do that with pain and suffering witnesses. We do that with doctors that know the individual patient. So Tony, you wrap this one up. I don't. I, it's been so long since the Turks lost at home, and this game at twelve to ten when Moth scored, I don't felt like it was a win. Yeah, you know, it's one of those where you you get one more face off, maybe you, you know you get one stop on defense, and and it's over. They solved the game away. Instead, Notre Dame comes back. They get two, you know, two goals, one down the alley, one kind of close, and uh, and now all of a sudden you're into three overtimes. Right. Uh, let me ask you: Did you ever figure out what happened with the Doc Day trade or no goal? It, he didn't score. It all bounced off his off of a off a Notre Dame player's helmet. An Entman stick hit the back of the net. The ref saw this the, the net move, but the ball was nowhere near the goal. Ricocheted out of bounds. They never gave that close. A lot of indecision on the refs today, which doesn't lead to like point two minutes to make the game. Question of the goals. Yeah, but that's not what it was. They, you know, they, they went both ways. It was, uh, listen, I'm not happy about the loss, but I gotta tell you something. It was some game. It was, man. Number four versus number two, and it lived up to it. It felt like a Memorial Day weekend game, if not for the 45 degrees and wind. Well, I saw both coaches afterwards, and I said to Oregon, I said, Coach, great win. Congratulations on round one. Well, and, right? you know, maybe Notre Dame finally, they celebrated like they had uh, just won the national title. Well, to so, them, they have. So maybe that their mythical national title is just realized. All right. Well, they have. And, you know, I hope they're going to start closing. They're going to beat each other last week. Because that team would have lost that championship game by a lot. Well, listen, they were great today. You can't take it away from them. The defense was good. Entenman's a handful. And Will uh, Griffin did an okay job on Weirman. All right. Kept Will Weirman from breaking down the middle. And uh, the Turks lost 13 to 12. Uh, number two versus number four. And, and look, three over. Yeah, time. maybe. It looks, like, it looks like you got two evenly matched teams there. I think I might, you know, I I, I might do their name up to number one because of who they're playing. You know, what was the point? You get a final Princeton Georgetown. Uh, Princeton won. Uh, Georgetown won. I think that's ten. I think that was last I saw something like that. Uh, which belittles Maryland win last week, <laughs> but that's the way it goes. Next week, Albany. In two weeks, we go down to Virginia. Right, right. All right. This was positive for Tony Wheeler and my buddy Wayne Byner signed off. Thirteen to twelve. The unhappy score. 